about counting the days. And, and yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine who is early in recovery. And she, um, just some time ago before Easter, she was traveling and she had a bit of uh, salmon, the, the fish, you know. Yeah. And she realized afterwards because she was having cravings. She, she started having cravings after, after this. Mm -hmm. And she realized that there had been sugar in the salmon, the way they cooked it. And then she had a evaluation from the place where she, she had treatment for her sugar addiction. And they asked her for, for how long have you been abstinent or, you know, for how many days or how long time and so on. And she just, you know, well, it's only been a week because, you know, it's a week ago since I had th this salmon. And I was like, are you crazy? You have one year of recovery and you had one bit of salmon with sugar in it have at least one year and maybe more you know and I think it's a great topic to talk about counting the days is that good or is it bad for the for recovery and for ourselves because I I always end up hitting myself with a bad number of days or no number of days enough and so on so mm -hmm. can you please share something about this your thoughts <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it's uh, definitely a little different with food than it is with alcohol and or drugs. Uh, it's not always as clear cut. And sometimes, you know, it, it's definitely you have to look at is this is counting the days? Is that the only reason I'm doing this? Because it shouldn't be about the quantity. It should be about the quality of your life. Right. Yeah. And so what are you doing each day for your recovery? Not how many you are stacking up. And I really think that it depends on you as a person as to what motivates you. Right. If you are looking at your phone every day and you're like, yes, like 35, I'm going to go get them. And you're telling people and you're sharing that can be a super empowering thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, what if you do have a slip, then are you going to be so afraid to be able to walk into a meeting and tell people, and they're going to say, you need to start over. That's not a very beneficial practice, I think, in some of the 12-step programs. And you need to realize that just because you had a slip, maybe you ate something off plan, doesn't mean that you've lost all that recovery time. So I really definitely think it, it depends on the person. And I know for alcohol, counting the numbers wasn't enough, right? It didn't keep me sober. No. I think that what kept me sober was living a recovery life. If you're counting the numbers for other people, then it's never going to work for you because we are very stubborn, rebellious people. So if you're counting the numbers for yourself, then all the best to you. And it can be wonderful when you stand up and you have your three years and you have your celebrations, but then there's also sometimes that what's next once you reach those marks. So it's just constantly keeping in check with your emotions and how you feel about it. And it's completely individual, I think. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I, so in the beginning, like when I work with clients or when people call me and they just want some, like a consultation or some guidance, right? I do ask about the, the days that they've been out of the food, the sugar, whatever those, you know, kind of like drug-like foods are for them because I like to give a little bit of education as far as acute withdrawal and post-acute withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And there's, we all know, right? Like there's just this timeline, like that's part of the predictability of this disease. There's just this timeline. And so I, I want to know those numbers to give them some education, but I have zero, like, I just don't give weight to those numbers as far as is this abs, like, do you have to have a certain number of days to be abstinent or in recovery? You know, a lot of people like to repeat, oh, I've heard Bitten Johnson say you have to have six months in order to even like be a return or to be a relapse and this kind of thing. And, and technically, you know, speaking as far as the DSM is concerned, as far as the APA is concerned, you just don't have to meet criteria for three months to be considered in early remission, right? So if people are, are wondering about that kind of stuff, you know, we can talk about that, but as far as counting the days, and then like you guys said, like a year or 35 days, and there's some sort of like accidental ingestion of sugar or whatever, right? And then people 
believe now I've screwed it all up. Now I've whatever, or, or now I start over at day one. I just don't know that that's helpful for people. If it's helpful for you do that. But in my experience, it has not been. And when, when I have people coming to me and saying, I've had four or five different sponsors fire me in the last year because I have too much fruit or I had something that I didn't know had sugar in it or whatever. To me, that just perpetuates the guilt and shame cycle. And I'm just unwilling to go there with people. I counting days does not work for me. My perfectionist shows up and it becomes, it becomes a terrible, terrible thing in my head. And ultimately I want to be craving obsession, whatever free, right? Like I don't want my life to be filled with what day am I on? Am I going to make it through today? Oh my gosh, does this have this, that, or the other thing? So I don't accidentally, what, right? Like I, I want to be able to live my life. Like Larissa was saying, because that is what keeps me going. Right. And so, and so then we have to talk about counting those days and, and defining abstinence and recovery again. Right. And I've got people coming to me saying, I haven't been in the sugar, flour, grains, whatever for, for months, but I've been overeating. So now am I not abstinent? right? I'm overeating, but there are things that are not causing me to crave, you know, that and, and obsess over and whatever. So now am I absent? So yeah, I mean, I think it gets to be a really tricky topic, these counting the days and, and how much weight we put on them. What do you think, Annika? Well, I'm thinking a lot. <laughs> As always, well, I'm, I'm also thinking, you know, I've, I've been thinking about numbers, recovery and, and numbers, you know, scales, weighting your body, weighting your food, weighting your, I mean, numbers and, and being uh, the perfect, perfectionism and so on. But for me, counting the days, I, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of people who has many days, many years, who has to tell everyone all the time, you know, I have 20 years or I have 18 years and so on. And they kind of have to mention it everywhere they go. And um, I think that time is, it's like you said, Molly, I think it's important when you want to educate people that, okay, these things that you experience right now, the first three weeks, that's withdrawal symptoms. You have to, to, to kind of ride it out or, or just go with the flow and you can, you can do it. Um, I mean, drink this and eat that and do that to, to get through the first three weeks. But after that, I think it's more important to look for recovery than, than days, you know, because it's like we had the other talk, uh, abstinence versus recovery. You can be abstinent or uh, off drugs for years and you still don't have any kind of recovery. Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of, okay, is it good or is it bad? <laughs> but that also, I mean, when I'm, and sometimes I feel like, a, a, I don't know, like a liar, because when people ask me, how long have you been in recovery? And I, well, I've been in, in recovery for 14 years, going on my 15th. And then they kind of think that I've been sugar free for 14 or 15 years, but I haven't. But I've been in recovery for 14 or 15 years because I've been, you know, I kept doing my, my travel. I went back, I put up the, the tools and I did my work. I called my sponsor and I plan the, the food and you know I, I I kept using all my tools and that's also where we get back to like you said Clarissa about the slip and the lap and then you have the relap that also one thing that you have to define I think when you are in recovery that and sleep can be something with sugar in it if you eat it accidentally or it's not like you have to go back counting the days uh, just because of that so yeah, yeah it's a lot of thoughts uh, coming <laughs> No, and it's true. And it also really depends. Like you said, Annika, are you a person who puts your self-worth based on a number, right? Mm -hmm. So what that number is on the scale or what, how many days sobriety you have. And I also heard when you were speaking that superiority complex that exists sometimes in the 12-step programs with like, I have 20 years, but you know, there could also be someone with one year that has done um, incredible things every single day that should not diminish their journey. And this is a lifelong journey. So if we get stuck counting the days, we get lost in the meaning of our life. And that is just so futile to me 
that really I prefer to just one day at a time and focus on all the incredible things I can do that day and all the recovery activities I can fill my life with. And then all of a sudden it's like the Facebook memory pops up and it's like, you have a year. It's like, wow. You know, it, it's not, that's not the focus. Mm -hmm. The number shouldn't be the focus for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, it, feel, it feeds into that destination addiction that happens in us, right? Like just, and then it can really become a more of a white knuckling for people, you know, all those things. I think you guys are right. Like we lose sight of what is the truth, you know, what is the real thing that needs to happen there? It's recovery. Yes, abstinence is a part of a recovery journey, you know, for a lot of people. And to, like you said, Annika, like you say, I've been in on this, I've been in recovery for this many years. And then it might be like misleading or people might be misled into thinking, or you worry about that. And, and so I just show up and say, you know, I started my food recovery journey this, you know, this month, this year, November, 2017, it hasn't always looked like it looks like today, but, mm -hmm. but that's important, right? Because we don't know until we know. So we just start with an idea. And the point is, is you just keep moving forward. And when you know different, you do different. Right. Yeah. And we just keep going that like Clarissa was saying, like, that doesn't diminish like all the other stuff that you've got going on. Also, you know, I think when people wear that as a badge of honor and go around introducing themselves with like this, you know, whatever that probably works for them. But I think then it's like on me to remember one, they're not judging me because I have, you know, less amount of time, mm -hmm. but also two, just because they have decades of recovery doesn't mean that they have what I want. No. Right. And so it's still important to look for those people that have what I want, because maybe it's somebody who only has a few days on me. Hmm. Right. Or, or maybe they don't have any time on me. Maybe they actually are still working on it, but they've got something else going on in their life that I want to know how they do that. Right. And so it's, it's, it's really, a, a, we have to remember it's a, we program right? And that we really have to connect with people that match our insides as well, or what we want our insides to look like. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, sometimes again, I think that number is just a big distraction from what this is really supposed to be about. Yeah. It's like making a number, your higher power kind of. I'm, yes. uh, I've been thinking, I've been talking to, well, a lot of people, of course, but, but uh, also about the scale, you know, scaling, um, weighing and measuring and so on. And uh, some people tell, tell me, because I've been weighing and measuring my food for many years, and sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. Uh, when I when I obsess about it, you know, and I have to, you know, take some food off, and I can't take a whole piece of something, and so on. Then then I realize that this is this is my disease talking. I'm I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm not I'm use I'm not using it as a tool. I'm using it as my higher power. But when I'm using the scale, uh, and it helps me to quiet my brain when when I don't have all the talking, you know, should I eat more? Should I eat less? Should I eat this? Should I eat that? You know then I think it's fine to use the scale because then I'm not slave uh, under the numbers kind of. So that's one thing that I'm, I'm thinking of that that's important for me to remember where do I have the focus? Is it the, the numbers or the way kind of? That's what I'm picking up when you're talking also. It's not about the goal, it's about the way we do it, what we fill our days with, what, how we use the tools and so on. And I think that's so important. Yeah, yeah, I agree, yep. Exactly. Because if the, if the, if we have 30 days of abstinence, but there's 30 days that of a life that we don't really want to participate in, yeah. how is that worth it? Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> I rather build the life worth participating, right. Showing up in and being immersed in and, you know, Clarissa went, uh, waterfall chasing, right. Is yeah. that what, what you called it the other day? And she had these pictures and I mean, that is a life worth wanting to participate in right and so then it's like when that become when the journey becomes the focus yeah. and less about that destination of like i'm going to get day 31 or i'm going to get day 3001 at any cost versus this is the life i want to live and then it just it comes along with it right i mean i don't know clarissa you you go on a lot of adventures you know and i think that speaks to like just living it out loud yeah and i think it's so important like 
maybe I count the minutes in a day of all the things that I can do, but it's certainly not about like the end goal number so that, you know, what am I going to say about myself? What will people say about me when I pass away? Will it be, oh, she got four years of food sobriety. I certainly don't, I hope that's not what they're going to remember me by. And so it's the other things, right? It's the connections. It's the time that you spend with family. It's enjoying the recovery activities. I don't work out just because I, for fitness, it makes my mental health better. It makes me feel good. It gives me more energy to go out and do a whole bunch more things in my day. And I think that's what this journey is about. If I look back, you know, like Annika said at the 14 years, I certainly don't want it to be like, oh, I had this many abstinent meals. It's like, what were all these other life things that I wanted to accomplish that I was able to because I was abstinent from food and I wasn't in the obsession and I wasn't worried about like, what can I eat, not can I eat, what, what should be on my plate? No, it's like the freedom. Mm. That's what you want your journey to be about. It sure is. Yeah. And that's when you feel alive and, and thriving and, and not, you know, just surviving. That's, a, that's a, such a big difference really is absolutely mm-hmm. and it, it can be you know like oh I went to I found what meetings work for me but it's also again not about the quantity of the meetings you go to it's about the connections you make in those meetings and then the people that you get to bring along with you on your journey and share it with where you feel like these are actual people in my life I can be genuine with like you ladies when I show up I'm like ah, you know, you just be you and just chat it out. And I fear no judgment from you guys as to what I'm going to say, because I know that you guys get what I'm saying. You've probably experienced some aspect of it. And if you have a differing opinion, that's okay too. I want to hear it. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big things that I, I kind of, you know, think that there are so many things that I still Uh, want to learn learn new things and and the development in recovery and I couldn't reach that until I was uh, off my drugs you know being abstinent but then also when when I when we look at the the uh, addiction interaction disorder I have a personality who tends to be obsessed about things you know (laughs) I can be obsessed about food I can be obsessed about my dogs I can be obsessed about my family you know anything and that's not, I mean, then the days is an important, the number of days is an important, the way I'm living is the important thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm, you know, I'm still eager to learn more things and to have the genuine, genuine relationships with people and to be, like you said, Clarissa, authentic, being here, being right here and now, and also, you know, look for people where I can relax and just be me. That's so important to me now. I don't have to put a mask on or anything. I just can be myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Like counting can be, it can show up in many ways. I was just thinking when you were talking, like for me, sometimes counting shows up as like success, right? So how much money is in the bank? Is that success? How many clients do I have? Is that success? How many likes do I get on Facebook? Is that success? How many followers do I get? Like counting, it makes you crazy. Sometimes it can make me crazy is what I should say, um, because it becomes obsession too. And so for me, I'm better off. I don't weigh myself. I might post something on Instagram, but then I let it go to the world. I'm not checking in. Ooh, how many likes did I get? I actually try to avoid doing that because it just creates that obsession in my head. And, and I think the more I worry about the numbers, like how many people I'm working with, then I take away all the time from my self-care and recovery activities. So it's actually not defining success. It's defining failure if that's how I'm counting things. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which makes me think about, you know, it's so interesting. I feel like I'm, I feel like sharing this kind of stuff, right? I I sometimes feel like I'm coming from a little bit of a privileged place because, you know, I have been on this journey for so long. And for me now, right, like as of today, like I know there's nothing that will make me go back to, to those foods that I would binge on that would make me crazy and that angry person that I was, you know, those kinds of things. But I work with a lot of clients that struggle to just even get 
one whole day. Right. And so sometimes that, and, and I get, I know that I get hung up on that day one day, what, because they're hung up on it. Right. Like I try to meet them where they're at. And then I forget, wait a minute, pull back. Like I'm supposed to be the voice of sanity. Right. And so what I want people to hear in this conversation is that maybe day one of recovery is not abstinence. Maybe day one of recovery is just showing up and saying, what am I willing to do today to get me just one step closer to abstinence? If that's my ultimate goal. Right. And, and then, and not discount that that was a worthwhile day because if I can't get out of the food today, but today I can get out and I can take myself for a walk in nature and breathe, you know, a properly through my in and out through my nose and just like be present in this walk and hear the birds and see the trees. And, and, you know, maybe you hear a train in the distance, whatever it might be when you can experience it fully in that moment, is that not something more than what you had the day before when you were just rushing, rushing, rushing through life? Like Clarissa, like you were saying, like, what does the bank account say? How many clients do I have? You know, whatever. Like, I think that's a really important piece of this too. And the way you count your days is the way that you count your days. And maybe you don't need to count them at all so much as just say today, this is what I'm willing to do and follow through.